begin this hour with a new call for transparency and accountability at, at social media platforms from a former tech insider, Frances Haugen. Her new book is called The Power of One. It tells the story of how she blew the whistle on Facebook. You'll recall that story. Back in 2021, she was a Facebook data scientist, and she, well, she resigned from that position, then anonymously leaked thousands of pages of research from the company, now known as Meta, of course, that leak exposed the potentially negative effect of Facebook's algorithms, and she later revealed her identity on 60 Minutes. Here is some of what she had to say to our colleagues there. One of the consequences of how Facebook is picking out that content today is that it is optimizing for content that gets engagement or reaction. But its own research is showing that content that is hateful, that is divisive, that is polarizing, it's easier to inspire people to anger than it is to other emotions. Mm -hmm. Haugen's book uh, is released at the same moment as the Surgeon General is warning about the mental health effects of social media on young people. We should point out before we get to the conversation, we did reach out to Meta about the book, also the Surgeon General's advisory, but Meta has declined to comment. So with no further ado, Francis Haugen, good morning. Thank you for being here. Thank you for inviting me. Uh, the book uh, is powerful, it's eye-opening, and you say it's not about fear or despair. It's about mm -hmm. each reader, with each page they turn, being on a path to a brighter future for social media. Mm -hmm. What do you think the biggest issue is right now in the way of that future? Mm. Social media is the most powerful industry in the world f for how opaque it is. You know, it's like having a soda company where people keep compulsively consuming it, and when scientists say, we want to research this, the company comes back and says, no, we'll sue you. Mm. That literally is what Facebook does. They've sued researchers who caught them with egg on their face. Companies that are opaque can cut corners at the public expense, and there's no consequences. Until someone like you comes along, right? <laughs> so, like, with Google results, you can analyze them. They're exactly. publicly facing. With food, you can say what's in the product. But with this, you don't really know what's in the product because you don't know how it's being served up. Now, Meta would say, yeah. and they have launched... 30 different, I think, items to help parents in particular uh, protect their kids in various ways. Is it enough? What's fascinating about that list, I asked about it backstage. A number of those features launched the summer before I came out because the UK passed a law saying that kids' privacy had to be protected. And yet Facebook is claiming this is how we're responding to Francis. So I would say, no, it's not enough. Ah. Because it was already in the works before you blew the whistle. Well, it's, it's also, you know, those features, we don't have any accountability on them. Like, researchers don't get to study the effectiveness. Facebook just gets to use them as PR marketing stunts. Oh, that's a great point. Why have regulations and, you know, these efforts been easier in places like Europe than here mm. in the U.S.? I think a big part of it is uh, we take for granted that the English version of Facebook, the version of Facebook in the United States, is actually the cleanest, safest version of Facebook in the world. And so in Europe, they speak many more languages, and many of those languages got very, very little investment for safety um, interventions. And so they were paying a, a much higher cost for using social media than we were, and so they were more willing to act. You say that this wasn't the book that you expected to write. Mm -hmm. um, and, and it details your path of becoming mm -hmm. a whistleblower. Um, why did you title it The Power of One? Mm -hmm. and, you know, uh, the original book I set out to write was uh, focused on the idea that people have a lot of reasons why they don't follow their hearts. You know, that they, they're afraid of losing their jobs, of uh, losing whatever, uh, be, being impoverished, losing their homes, losing their spouses. You know, they're going to end up estranged from everything. Falling out of complacency. And, and I, I had all those experiences in my late 20s at the same time. And I came back from it. And I wanted to write a story about um, that, where do we find our strength? Like, how do we stand up when we fall down? Because the hardest thing I did wasn't blow the whistle on Facebook. But because I lived those experiences, I was able to follow my heart and stand up in the truth. Francis, it's such a great point about access to the underlying data so researchers mm -hmm. and independent fact checkers uh, uh, can look at what Facebook and other social media platforms are doing, meta, I should say. Um, but they would also say, look, these algorithms, these are like our secret recipes. Mm -hmm. These are the things that make us profitable companies. Bottom line I, business, Tom. Yeah, how do, you balance mm -hmm. the, how do you balance the two? I mean, the public's right to know if they have such a right in this case sure. and the company's right to be a competitive business. So there's a lot of different ways we can release data. Imagine something as simple as how many children are online at 10, 11, midnight, 1, 2, 3, 4 a.m. Something as simple as that is not the secret sauce of Facebook. But if they had to publish those numbers every week, I guarantee you parents groups would stand up and demand action. You get advertiser boycotts. You get divestment. You might even get laws saying if you can't drive these numbers down, you know, that's, you're in trouble. 
that gives freedom to the companies to innovate, to find the right ways to give kids more control over their usage, but holds them accountable. Yeah. You know, you, you, that makes perfect sense because as a father, mm -hmm. I don't have the secrets to the recipe. Um, yeah. What I have is noise in rooms when I'm walking through hallways. Yeah. And as I creak open the door, I see a lit yeah. light underneath yeah. covers. Yeah. And it might be 10 or 11 p.m. And I'm saying, yeah. whoa, whoa, wait, wait a minute. I thought you were supposed to be in yeah. bed hours ago. Um, but how do we hold these companies accountable? You know, we have parents at home that are watching yeah. this and they're saying to themselves, I'm doing my best as a parent, but also I have a job. I can't monitor every moment. I can do what I can through these apps to monitor what they're doing on their phones. But it is ultimately up to these companies because they know what they're doing. How do we hold them accountable? We need to call our, our elected representatives. There are laws pending right now, things like the Platform Accountability and Transparency Act, that do things like give safe harbor to researchers, demand data access. These things allow us advanced research. But for kids specifically, you know, we haven't updated our privacy laws for kids online since the, the 90s. Like, mm -hmm. think about how much the internet wow. has changed since then. Wow. And I wanna, I wanna um, address one thing. You can do a lot as a parent but these companies have hundreds of employees that are trying to make their apps stickier. Yeah. You know, yeah. you're fighting an impossible fight. And we, parents are on these apps too. Yeah. And parents are on these apps too. That's scary too. to hear. You are you are fighting an impossible fight. It's uh it's the afternoon after school hours in Tel Aviv where my uh, teenager uh, mm. is a rising ninth grader uh, and I've already got three calls this morning on my phone. I guarantee it's not to say dad I love you, it's to say dad remove the time limits off of Instagram. <laughs> <laughs> I there's always a reason. There's, there's always yeah. a reason why the time limits need to be yep. released. Yep. Uh, but no doubt. You you show us uh, <laughs> what's, at, what's at stake here. We do deserve a better and brighter future exactly. for social media. Yeah. Francis Haugen, thank you very much. Congratulations on the book. Thank you. That book is The Power of One. It is available now wherever you get your books.